And what I'd like to do now is before we move on, have Craig Federici come up and give you a demo of these three new features all working together. Craig? Hello. Good morning. So let's take a look at Lion in action. And we're going to start with gestures. Great play to, place to experience gestures is here in Safari. The first thing you'll notice, it's apparently something funny, is that how simple this UI looks because there are no scroll bars. It's a really clean look. We don't need scroll bars anymore because we can simply push the content with our fingers. We can flick and get momentum, get a nice little bounce. The page feels really alive beneath your fingers. You can also ex uh, expand your fingers and fluidly zoom, just like that. Zoom out and you get a nice little bounce. The page goes right back into place. If I want to smart zoom, I just double tap with two fingers. It smart zooms in, double tap again, smart zooms out. Now I want to show you something really cool with gestures, and that's how it can navigate in Safari. I'm going to drill into a story, and then after I've read it, I want to actually get back to the previous page. Well now, I can just take two fingers and swipe the page right off to the side and return back to my previous page. If I want to get back, I can swipe right back. It's really fantastic. In fact, I can swipe through my entire Safari browsing history just like that. Really smooth. Next up, I'd like to show you full screen apps. I'm going to launch iPhoto here. And you can see that iPhoto has adopted Lion's standard new full screen control. So I'll just take, Lion, or take uh, iPhoto full screen. It's a great way to look at my photo album. If I want to get back to my desktop, take three fingers. And I can just swipe the desktop, swipe iPhoto away and back to my desktop. But I didn't have to leave iPhoto and take it out of full screen. It's actually right there. Take a peek at it, go back, just like that. We love this so much that we made gestures accessible in exactly the same way. Swipe over to the left, and I have access to my dashboard. You can see Safari supports full screen as well. Let's go take our Safari window full screen. So now we have our dashboard over our desktop over here to the left. We have Safari. And of course, iPhoto is still there in full screen as well. You'll notice how Safari is making great use of all the available space on the screen for my content. But if I want to get at my bookmarks bar, or my menu, just go to the top. You see they slide right out like that really nicely. And when I want to exit full screen, I have a control right there in the upper right. Animates right back out. Let's take a look now at Photo Booth. This is an app absolutely born to run in full screen. You can see I'm surrounded by the curtains of the, the photo booth. And in here, I can experience some fantastic new face <laughs> detection effects. So notice as I move, the birds actually track. That's right, it's the most important feature in Lion. And we can also use this face tracking technology to perform some targeted facial enhancements. For instance, I can finally have those big eyes that I've always hoped for. So I'm going to take a picture of that. So that's, that's pretty cool. So playing around, yeah, that's great stuff. So you, know, you can spend hours at this. So full screen is fantastic. But of course, Mac users love to get, do a lot of things at once. And that often means that they have a lot of windows. In fact, my desktop often looks a little bit more like this. right? I've got a lot going on. So how do I get? across all of those different activities, well, I just take three fingers, swipe up on the trackpad, and I'm in mission control. From here, I can get at any window I want. So if I want to get at iCal here, I click, it comes forward, sweep back into mission control. Over to dictionary, same thing. And across the top, you see I have my dashboard, my desktop, my full screen apps. So I want to get to iPhoto, just click, it comes forward from anywhere, three fingers up, and I'm back in mission control. I can also quick look my windows. If I just hit spacebar here, get a better look at my calendar, or take this pile of preview windows and spread them apart with a little gesture up. But you know what's really awesome is the way that multiple desktop spaces are now integrated right into mission control. Just take my mouse up to the corner of the screen, and a little space pops up. I click, I've just created a new space. And I can populate it by just dragging the windows I want to work with in that space, just like this and I've set up a new desktop. 
It's really useful. I can swipe through the spaces, of course, here in, uh, in Mission Control, go over to my desktop, and if I want to then take even an entire app and all of its windows and create a new space for that, I can click on the preview icon, drag the whole pile to the corner, I've just created another space. And the spaces are just as easy to clean up as they were to create. I just click, they delete, and they fl windows fly right back to my original desktop space. So that is mission control. Thank you very much. Thank you, Craig. To see how these new features now work seamlessly together to create an incredible experience in OS X, unlike anything we've had on a personal computer before. Next up, the Mac App Store. We launched the Mac App Store this past January, and users have found out that it is the best place to purchase and discover new software applications. Now, for years, there have been many software channels to buy PC software, and they all work kind of the same way. You hop in your car, you drive downtown, you buy a DVD if they happen to have it, you drive back home, you load it up, or you wait for it to come, mail order, well, no more. Well, now with the Mac App Store, you can get your software right from the comfort of your own home on your Mac. And in the last six months, something incredible has happened. In the last six months, the Mac App Store has now become the number one PC software channel for buying software. That's incredible. <laughs> Passing Best Buy and Walmart and Office Depot. And the developers that have gotten on board with the Mac App Store have seen some great success too. For example, Autodesk. They brought their Sketchbook Pro application to it, and since they've put it on the Mac App Store, they've seen a million new users on the Mac. Ferro Interactive has brought a host of games, including Mini Ninjas. Hopefully you've all played it. Doubling of overall revenue since they brought it to the Mac App Store. And small, great developers, like Pixelmator, has brought their amazing new image editing application to the Mac App Store. They've seen a quadrupling of their revenue. In fact, they made a million dollars in their first 20 days. So the Mac App Store has been a big hit for large and small developers. So what's new in Lion? Well, first, it's built right in. You don't have to go and download it and get it and decide to use it. It's built in for every Mac user. And there's a lot of great features for you developers to take advantage of. Some of them you're used to from the iOS App Store, like in-app purchases. You can now build those in. <laughs> Push notifications if you want to alert users about important information. You can make your applications more secure. There's a built-in sandboxing method now in the Mac App Store. And for users, downloads will be even faster because you can get these updates as Delta updates. <laughs> so that's the Mac App Store. It's a really important part of the whole experience of Lion, as you'll hear more about. Number five, a simple but powerful idea, Launchpad. Wouldn't it be great if no matter where you are in your system, if you want to get at an application and quickly launch it, you can with a simple gesture. Well, now you can. With Launchpad, you simply make a simple gesture, a pinch motion, and all your applications fly onto your screen. No matter where they are in your system, Launchpad knows where they are. You can have multiple pages of applications that you can organize any way you want. When you go and buy a new application on the Mac App Store, it downloads and installs right into your Launchpad. And you can make it look however you'd like. You can rearrange your icons. You can create folders, just as we're used to from iOS. And now you can do that on your Mac as well. So that's Launchpad. Next, resume. Here's a simple idea. From the beginning with a computer, you've had to run applications. Sometimes you quit them. You go back, and you're back at the starting point. You, get, you, you're, you're, you have no more windows open. Your documents aren't open. You usually have to pick a template. Why can't applications get you back to work quickly? Well, that's what Resume does. Now when you launch an application in Lion, it brings you right back to where you were when you quit. It remembers what documents you were open. It remembers the text that was selected in the document. It remembers where the palettes were and the windows and everything, just how you like it. And Resume doesn't work just on an application. It works system-wide. So the next time you have to shut down and restart your, your Mac for a reason, maybe you've installed some new software and it asks you to reboot, yet you like everything just the way it is, well, don't worry. You get the new login window, you log in, and Lion will bring you back to the work environment as you left it when you restarted. All your applications running, all those spaces you set up, all just the way you like it. So that's Resume. Number seven, autosave. 
From the beginning of using computers, we've all had to remember one really important fact. Save, save, save all your work as you're going. Whether it's file save or command S on a Mac, you better keep saving. Because the one time you might forget to save what you're doing, something goes wrong and what are you going to hear? You should have saved what you're doing. <laughs> well, why should you? Why can't the computer help you? Well, that's what Lion does. As you're creating a document, Lion can automatically save it in the background without you having to do anything, without you having to see anything. Your work is just being saved for you. This is a really powerful but simple thing, but, but as we got into it, we found there's more things we can do for you since we're auto-saving. So if you zoom in on the title bar of your documents, you'll see the name of your document is actually a menu now that you can tap on and take advantage of the power of auto-save. Now, for example, let's say you're doing work and you don't like the work you did and you're worried it got auto-saved over what you liked that you had done previously. Well, now you can just select revert to last open and get back to where you were when you started. Or maybe you love the changes you've made and they're exactly what you want. You don't want it to ever get auto-saved over it again because it's perfect the way it is. You can just se select lock and now your document's locked. It's like a template and nothing can ever change it. You can even write from within the application, select duplicate and create a second document just like the first one that you can start working on another version. So you have the power of all of this right from the title bar of your window. So that's autosave. Now autosave gave us a great idea to go even further with the next feature, and that's called versions. So you're working on a document, you're entering the text, you're formatting, you're adding copy, you're adding graphics, and all along autosave is saving your document. In fact, it's saving all these versions of your document as you're working. So we call that versions. It's automatic, you don't have to do anything, we'll do it for you with Lion. If you love something in a split second, you can of course take a manual snapshot if you want. And it's very efficient. We only store the difference between the versions, they're not whole new documents. And you don't have to worry if you ever share your work with someone else that they're gonna get all that back work that you won't, don't want them to get. When you copy it off or you send it an email, we only send the current version. So how do you get it, take advantage of this power of autosave and versions? Well again, go back to that menu on the top and there's another choice there that you may have noticed. Browse all versions. You tap on it and you get this beautiful new interface. It looks a lot like Time Machine. But rather than being about your whole system, it's about that one document you're working on. On the left is the current version. On the right, all the past versions. And you have a time scale on the right, just like Time Machine, you can scroll back through them, and they're all live. You can switch and make any one the current one. You can even cut and paste between them. So that's versions. What I like to do is ask Craig to come back up and give another demo showing how this all works together. Craig? Hello again. All right, well let's, let's start with Launchpad. You see it's an icon right here on my dock. I click. I get an instant view of all of the applications on my system, no matter where they're installed. I can page through them really nicely with gestures. And when I want to launch, let's say like address book, it's just a single click to bring it up. I can also gesture with a four finger pinch to get in as well. So of course, when I want to add things to my uh, launch pad, the best way to do that is with the Mac App Store. I'm going to launch it right here. You can see on the Mac App Store, we have great featured applications top paid and free apps, categories. We have also all of your purchased apps. So then if you uh, buy another Mac or you buy on one Mac and you want to get the app on the other one, you can download them here at no additional charge. And of course, updates. With just a click, you can bring all the apps you have installed on your system from the App Store up to date. Well now, let's uh, try adding Twitter to our Mac. We're gonna click here and go to the Twitter product page. And with a click, I can buy, the app actually lifts up out of the App Store and flies right into my launch pad, downloads, and is ready to use. From here, I can just click and position it wherever I want. I can move it maybe to the first page. And as you see, we have folders, like this productivity folder. It works great. If I want to create my own folder, just pick something up, drop it, and I've created a folder just like that in Launchpad. Next, I'd like to show you just how fantastic the Mac is now with Lion and working with documents. 